Only 11 at this point. Yeah. I think we were much below 20. Yeah. yeah. What did you have? I had 28. Yeah. We're in the midst of old 20s. What did you have? 13. That yeah, boy. Yeah, we're, we're. Can I get the person in, with the name Carol, just a last name or more information, just to identify you if you call in? Joe, can you hear me now? Yes. 
Good, yeah, and good. we can hear you. you. We were okay. just, we we're having trouble with the sound. So <clears throat> I think we're good. Should we get rolling? I can hear you. Yep. Oh, looks good. Let's go. <clears throat> but it's in a different spot. Yeah. Butch, you can hear us fine? Fine. Over. Yeah. Thank you, Butch. Okay. There we go. Yep. So, how many people do we have? Uh, do we, do we know how? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, 30. 36 participants. Okay. 36 participants, and that's counting us. Well, we're counting us as yeah. one. Yeah. We're one. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get started. So I can't see everybody that's on the call at this point, but uh, I'm Matt Maxim, the town moderator. Um, welcome everybody to our COVID-19 version of our, our town meeting. Um, we're here today just to discuss the ballot issues that will be voted on March 2nd or before if you, you want to do an absentee ballot. Um, we're not able, like we would at a normal meeting, we can change articles from the floor. We are not able to do that today. So this is more of a question and answer um, type of thing. It's, it's really a public dialogue. Um, it's really important. It's a bit unwieldy this way. So it's very important that everybody is concise. Um, we will act with civility and grace towards one another. Keep everything polite. Um, so the meeting is being recorded. Um, audio, there's an audio recording happening of the meeting and the local access channel is recording it as well. Um, if you want to ask a question, we will stop after each section and, and take questions. Uh, raise your hand electronically is, is the absolute best way to go. If you're on the phone, you hit star nine to do that. Um, hopefully if you're on the phone, you've given um, Beth or Nikki your name. Um, so Nikki Norris is on here and Beth Fish um, to the town assistance. And um, sorry, uh, so we ask that everybody stays muted until you're called on by me. Um, and there's no debate back and forth, just address everything to the chair. Um, and please make an effort to, if you're on the computer to put your correct name on your screen. And that will allow us to call on you better. Um, so with me, Today, I have our select board chair, Mary Riley, John Doton, our uh, town clerk, Charlie Degner, and our town manager, Bill Kerbin. And on Zoom, we have our other select board members, uh, Butch Sutherland, Jill Davies, and Carrie Cole. So um, at this point, let me just start this meeting. The legal voters of the town of Woodstock, county of Windsor, state of Vermont are hereby notified and warned to meet on Zoom on February 20th at 10 a.m. and or February 22nd at 6 p.m. for the annual meeting, which will be in the form of an informational Zoom meeting. And on Tuesday, the second day of March, 2021, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. to act on the following. The legal voters of the town of Woodstock are further notified that voter qualifications, registration, and absentee voting relative to said meeting shall be as provided in chapters 43, 51, and 55 of Title 17, Vermont statutes annotated. You must be registered to vote in the town of Woodstock in order to vote. The legal voters of the town of Woodstock are further notified that the informational hearings that will be held are the, for the purposes of explaining the articles that will be voted on by Australian ballot. No changes to the articles can be made during these meetings. Due to COVID-19, all articles will be voted on by Australian ballot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to review, the, we're gonna give the select board an opportunity to review what they were working on this past year, what they're gonna continue working on in the next year. And then we'll go through the articles in the budget and I'll, I'll read the articles that have been warned and we'll take questions periodically. 
Um, so everybody but the person speaking should be muted. Uh, one person at a time will be speaking. If you have questions, as I said, raise your hand electronically. Um, especially if you're on the phone, share your name. And we're gonna restrict comments to one minute per, per, per speaker. So be concise in what you have to say. You don't have to use the full minute. The, the sooner we can do this, the, the easier it will be. Um, after a minute, you, you will be muted. Um, we're, we're gonna try um, not to have, we're not gonna have repeat questions from the same person. We'll go through everybody who's got their hand raised um, before we come back to somebody with a second question. And I would ask too, if somebody else asks your question, please take your hand down just to, just to expedite things. Um, it's important that everything gets said, but it doesn't have to be said over and over again. Um, and any inappropriate behavior um, is, we're just gonna remove you from the meeting. It's not fair to everyone else. Um, so I think that is all that I have. Mary Riley will take over for a minute with the Woodstock vision. Woodstock has a vision. Woodstock will be a welcoming, creative community that balances the best of a small town living and world-class opportunities for all. We commit to sustaining our unique character and quality of life now and tomorrow. The specific elements of that are community for all, healthy environment, and thriving local economy. The municipal government work adds to creating that vision. And we'll talk about some of the projects we've done in the past year or that are in progress and what we're hoping to see for the future. Um, you may remember the visioning project that took place here about a year and a half ago, it was completed and we had a great picnic at Billings Farm and the vision still lives and it will be reinstituted and study will take place this coming year and we'll move forward to fulfill that vision that we have. Are there any questions? Are we able to see? I don't see that anybody has no. raised the hand. Okay, thank you. Let's move forward. Then, um, keeping Woodstock safe. Keeping Woodstock safe. Just about a year ago, town meeting time, the pandemic struck, and we took many actions to keep the community safe. Our emergency management team went into immediate action. And as state guidelines kept changing, we spread the word, did the work using Listserv, town website, and many other websites <coughs> and <coughs> message boards in the community. The select board began meeting weekly with Zoom calls. We supported the trustees worked together with them to pass the mask ordinance and created the Woodstock Wears Masks campaign. We printed and distributed signs for the stores to use encouraging safe behavior and mask wearing. We installed signs around the town and village encouraging mask wearing. We used listserv and other message boards to get the message out. Our thanks to David Green and the emergency management team for acting promptly and effectively throughout the entire time. Woodstock is reported to have had 37 cases since last March. And um, the Economic Development Commission switch their plans to be able to support our local businesses with grants from the Business Relief Fund. EDC also 
moved forward with completing phase one of the Ottaquiji River Trail, beginning to develop options for expanding the supply of housing to be continued in 2021. This is one of their projects and they are, it is at the top of their list. Funding the upcoming renovation of Teagle's Landing and other community programs are just ahead in their future. And the um, Economic Development Commission enhanced our inventory of picnic tables this morning, this past year during the pandemic's force, forceful time. And they um, bought adi six additional picnic tables, which we were able to place on the green and around the village where people could buy their takeout food and sit and eat. Are there any questions? Any comments? Thank you. We're going to be able to see if somebody raised their hand. Sure. There should be a young yeah. hand. Oh, yeah, there? that's better. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay, I don't see any questions. Now I can see some of you much better. Um, so if there are no questions on that, uh, the next thing is uh, resurfacing the Balefield tennis courts, which Carrie Cole is going to enlighten us on. So last year at town meeting, um, the voters approved the necessary funding to move forward with resurfacing the tennis courts. Um, though it's been difficult to get work done, as we all know, during the pandemic, we were able to start that work in late summer. The courts were resurfaced. The fences uh, were um, rebuilt and repaired. We were grateful to Rotary for donating $5,000 toward that fencing work. Um, the resurfacing has been finished for the two tennis courts and the one basketball court. Uh, the lines will be painted in the spring as soon as, soon as weather permits. And so we will also, um, on the basketball court, there will be lines for three pickleball courts, and there will be two pickleball court lines on one of the tennis courts. Uh, so I think that will be a huge asset in, in the summer to come. Are there any questions about this? Uh, yes, I can't see who it is, but there's a, a hand. Bill Corson. Oh, okay. Yes. Not, not a question, just approval. That's applause. Oh, oh got it. <laughs> I don't see any other questions, so we'll move along. Uh, the next thing uh, we're going to talk about is our fire chief, David Green, who's going to cover um, the EMS service, um, full time crew, and the EMS building update. Uh, good morning. So, a lot has happened since last uh, town meeting last year. Uh, voters approved a, um, a bond for a new building, and we are working on that uh, every day. We have selected a uh, contractor, DEW, out of Williston, I believe. We actually have a kickoff construction meeting next week, um, so we're really looking forward to that. Things are going smoothly. Um, we're hoping to break ground April 1st if the weather cooperates. Um, also, on a side note, there are some federal grants coming out aimed at um, some of these buildings for COVID related. While it may be a stretch, we will uh, keep watching them and apply as we deem uh, necessary. We may do some fancy writing and we will go after any grant that's available to us um, and just see what happens. So that's pretty much it on the building. Uh, the new staff started July 1st, which was approved by voters. Um, we hired eight people and things are working out very well. We have had some input from the hospital. Um, a good handful of cases have uh, actually, their outcome has significantly changed due, due to the rapid response of people in station. Um, so that's great news. One thing I do want to remind voters is um, 
our revenue pays for roughly half of the cost of this service. Um, unfortunately, some of that revenue is taken back by Medicare, Medicaid, and we go to just under half the cost of this service. So just please keep that in mind. Uh, by having people in building, our response times have re reduced from about 15 minutes to two minutes out the door or less. Um, so that's working really well. We also at this point have advanced care on every ambulance that goes out the door, um, something we hadn't had before. Um, during COVID, we had one uh, member that contracted COVID and uh, while he recovered good, it was a strain on the department, but we got by with just one and I'm thankful for that. Um, the new staff and the interaction of the volunteers call staff has been very well. Um, while it has been stressful and there's been hiccups, hiccups along the way, um, COVID did not help that um, due to not being able to meet in person. Uh, while we have done Zoom meetings and other things, like I said, things are going well and, and I don't see any reason they won't. Um, we received this year over $70,000 in grants for COVID related expenses and we continue to apply for those as necessary. Um, so things I, in my mind are going excellent and the town should be proud of the service that they approve and what it gives them. So if anybody has any questions, that's all I really have. So before we take questions, uh, Nikki, could you just explain quickly to anyone who might not know how to raise their hand electronically? So to raise your hand electronically, you can do it from the participants tab, or you can actually go to the bottom bar. You will see something that says reactions. It's a little smiley face. If you click on that, there's a raise hand. Thank you. If you're on the phone, you need to push star nine. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, for David? Uh, Charlie. Uh, thank you, Matt. I, Charlie Kimball from River Street. Uh, David, I'm just wondering of the staff that you hired, how many were actually affiliated with the ambulance squad before? And of the staff that are hired, how many live in the community? Do you know? So originally, we uh, half of the staff lived in Woodstock. Uh, one of those members um, really didn't like the 24-hour work period and has since left. Um, so we're just under half now. Any other questions for David? I don't see any. All right. And, and Nikki or Zoe, if, if you see somebody's hand raised that I don't notice, just give a shout to me. Thank you. Um, so the next thing is uh, moving to the 21st century, which Jill is going to cover. So we've had a very strange year and there are some silver linings to all of this, which is um, more of an effort being put into moving us into the 21st century. So now, uh, thanks to staff efforts, we can accept credit cards for bills. We never could do that before. And um, in the planning office, Neil has moved the entire permitting process online from beginning to end, including that payment. And all the planning documents and zoning regulations are online and searchable. And, and his goal is to get interactive zoning maps online so that the um, planning and zoning office is totally accessible by via the town website. And all of this uh, Neil's achieved within a year where our permits have doubled in volume. So we've also moved forward. Um, all of our meetings since the beginning of this pandemic have been on Zoom. And it's been really noticeable that the number of participants has increased. So as we make changes, we're going to uh, work out how we can continue this remote participation. So maybe we'll be looking forward to in-person meetings soon, but we'll have to work out how to get that remote participation too. Um, and then another project we started uh, is really to look at how we deal with all our paper records. 
If you've had a tour recently of Town Hall, then you've noticed that the third floor and some of the second floor is just full of boxes of paper and paper and paper, and they just keep growing. <laughs> so we started a project to look at what do we have to do with all of this paper? Um, how much can we, do we need to keep? How much can we digitize? How much can we discard? And all of this is uh, regulated by state law. So we'll be following the, the law, but instituting new practices so that we can go forwards and uh, save less paper, and then we'll go backwards and sort out all of that paper upstairs on the third floor before it um, falls in on us. So I also want to talk about the town hall project. Very little has been done in the town hall since 1987, so there's quite a lot of repair and renovation that needs to happen. And since, for a couple of years now, a volunteer team has been working with two select board members and the town manager, and we're calling it the Town Hall Rejuvenation Project. So this year to get started, we did some vital work to restore the brickwork on the side of the building. And we've also got a team undertaking more in-depth geotechnical and historical research to work out this, the status of that 1928 edition on the back of the building. They've been finding some really interesting things that suggest that this part of the building has been moving and had some issues from almost from the beginning when it was built. So we really need to understand, is it good to keep it and repair it? Or um, do we have to start again? Or can we add to it? What, what can we do to it that's um, judicious? So we're working with architects now and um, we'll, be making, we'll be drawing some concepts about the first and the second floors. And when those concepts are ready, then we'll be able to ask for more public comment but the sort of thing that we're looking at, we're looking at interior and exterior, exterior repair work. We're looking at renovating the town offices. And then we're looking at significant upgrades to the theater, to, to the lobby, the audience and the backstage portions of the theater. We really want to sort out ADA access so that um, everybody is welcome into the town hall and can easily access and it's really important that we're hoping to fund this work with significant private donations and grants and then just get a small bond from taxpayers. So the fundraising team has been busy and has raised $2 million so far. And we'll hopefully have to be able to update that news when we get to present all of this to everybody in spring. And then we can get more and more input as we do public meetings so that we get everybody's ideas uh, represented before we go forward with any more drawings. Um, and before we take questions, uh, I thought that would be a good segue, Jill, to introduce Neil Leitner. Neil, would you take 30 seconds or so and introduce yourself, our zoning administrator? Sure. Hi, I'm Neil Leitner. Um, I started on May 4th. Um, Michael Brands retired after 32 years of service on May 1st. And so I've been in the office since then. And um, Previously, uh, I have about 20 years of experience in planning. Um, previously, I was up in Richmond, Vermont, doing a similar role. Um, fortunately, um, being familiar with the state statutes and things like that, it wasn't too much of a, a learning curve. Of course, the town of Woodstock has its own zoning regs and all that. So that was, um, you know, the, sorry, that was the thing I needed to catch up on. And um, it's been good so far. And all the boards have been really amazing. Um, as Jill mentioned, we've had the COVID construction boom, I call it, um, really hit Woodstock. And so the board agendas have been very busy um, and the boards have been very um, professional and uh, responsive to the uptick. Um, we also had uh, Lynn Beach. Um, she retired as well. Um, and so um, I hired uh, Brooke Blitch. Blish and um, Brooke is catching on quite quickly and uh, we're very happy to have her in the office as the land use coordinator. Thank you. And uh, Roger Logan, is that? Yeah, I just, um, I, I would like to advocate that this year, very seriously, the town and village begin a look at the website infrastructure. Um, it's very difficult to find things on that website um, and I'm not, I'm not complaining to the staff because it's, it's ancient technology. I would suggest that we very seriously need to make sure that we're as 
being as open and transparent and distributing information as easily and as widely as possible. And now is the time to start planning so that we can put this into the budget for the next year. Thank you. Bill? Yes, a question for Jill. I know she didn't mention Pentangle at all in the Town Hall Rejuvenation Project. What role do you see them playing in the process? Thank you. So the way we're doing the project is that Pentangle are at the table. Pentangle is our, is rents the premises from the town, but we want to do this as one whole project so that the, the, the places that the town uses and what Pentangle uses and the exterior of the building are all considered together as an integrated project. So um, Pentangle are totally involved. Any other questions for, for Jill? I don't see any at the moment. We'll have other opportunities as well. So the next thing that we will be uh, talking about, Butch will update us on curbs and sidewalks and some road resurfacing. Okay, uh, so as, as everybody knows, we have a major uh, paving project that's gonna be going on through the village this summer. And uh, I'll talk about that uh, later, but in, in in lieu of that, we wanted to uh, uh, get as many of our curbings and sidewalks done as we could in the areas where um, the the paving project was going to take care take place. So if you if you remember this summer, we did um, all of Elm Street, uh, both sides of Elm Street, from the bridge down into the center of town, and we did a, a section in front of the town hall. And we have other areas uh, down on the um, east end uh, by uh, Maplefields and Cumberland Farms that we hope to accomplish before the paving project starts. Um, there's, we could do every single curb in practically in the village. There's many and many of them that are in need of repair. Uh, we're just not gonna have the funds or the time to get to them all before the paving project starts. So we're, 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 we're looking at the worst areas and um, moving forward with those. Uh, the sidewalk from the uh, Elm Street Bridge to the Congo Church or center of town uh, was repaved this year. And um, we just, with lack of funds and lack of contractors and lack of time to get things done, we concentrated more on um, trying to get these curbs reset. So um, we have a, a list of projects that for, for blacktopping uh, in the village. Uh, and and um, I, I'm gonna briefly run through this list, but I want you to understand that these are not, um, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. We've identified these areas as needed to be done. Uh, the uh, highway crew and town manager put out some, with the state, put out some markers so we could identify uh, the amount of travel. And that'll have, I'm sure, an effect when the, when the board decides which streets they're going to pave in the future. But we have several streets at Lincoln Street, School Street, College Hill Road, uh, Rose Hill, Eaton Place, uh, Shirtliff Road, the Senior Lane in West Woodstock, Sawyer Road, College Hill Road, Cabot Road, Ford Street, and Stanton Street. And as I said, that doesn't mean we're going to do these. These are the streets that we've looked at and identified as a need. That's for FY 2021. For 2022, uh, Slayton Terrace, and Pleasant Street, Rose Hill, and um, we have not, I do not have a list of sidewalks, but um, I think the board has looked at the sidewalk on Pleasant Street as being uh, used a lot because of the East End Park, and I'm sure that's on the list. So, um, I think I've covered it. Um, 
that whole uh, that whole total for 2021 uh, for those streets that I named off is somewhere uh, in the vicinity of $128,000. Are there any questions for Butch? Uh, yes, Wendy. Um, you're still muted. I, I moved on the screen, sorry, thank you. Um, my question, uh, thank you, Butch, is, is a, clar a question, clarification question. Most of the curbing and the sidewalks are in the village. And um, this is a government structure question. Where and how do the trustees or the village budget come into play in this, in this department of your oversight? Um, good question. Um, about, I can't remember, three, four, time goes by fast, but the village, uh, and the town merged the highway department and, and now the, all the streets, all the roads are under the jurisdiction of the uh, select board. Um, of course, as you know, we work closely with the village trustees and take their advice and con concerns about a lot of the issues. But that's, that's where it is. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, Jeffrey. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add to something Butch mentioned because there have been some inquiry from the public about uh, crosswalks and striping and how that has deteriorated within the village. And um, I know that we've allowed that to some extent because of the project that's happening starting this spring. When that paving's done, all of that striping will be redone and in a vigorous manner, as well as uh, the parking spaces. So everything will be restriped and uh, <clears throat> redone at that point. So I just thought uh, that um, people should not be aware of that because there's been some concern. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I think, I think that's it. Um, so next, John Doton has a few words about some other highway projects. Yes. Uh, I'll give you a brief summary of the uh, highway. Uh, we have a few paving projects we're going to try to do in the spring. We went over the budget and we're going to do a minimum amount of patching to get away with the uh, expense of the pavement. We're going to try to do what's necessary. Uh, we usually do more paving than we will be doing this year, but uh, we will try to do the projects that really need to be done. Uh, catch basins and storm drains, uh, we'll continue to do those. Those are a must, and uh, they've been doing those by little by little every year. And uh, as soon as the weather breaks, they'll start working on those. Uh, there are some of the basins and some of the uh, storm drains, uh, the pipe and stuff is bad and the entrance is bad. So they're gonna do those. Uh, the projects on Dunham and Densmore Hill uh, planned, those are ditch projects. Those are state mandated, so we have to do those. And uh, so we're going to do those as soon as the weather permits, we'll get someone to, we have uh, contracts for those. Uh, there is all the curbing is another item. Uh, 
We did quite a lot of curb and work this year. This year. Uh, where I suggested when we were making out the budget that we uh, slow down on the carbon projects. Uh, they are a necessity. And our budget this year was kind of a necessity. Uh, we, we tried everywhere we could to cut here and there, but uh, that was one place that I think could be cut. Uh, We'll do some that's very necessary, but uh, we're going to slow down on that. I guess that's about all of his that I've got to say about it. Uh, we've been, we've got all the fine town highway equipment in good shape. This year we got a new uh, backhoe well, last year, and then we got a new loader this year. Um, the guys like it. Uh, seems to be, everything seems to be going good up there at the town building. I go up there probably once a week, maybe, or try to, and uh, to see if there's any gripes. And uh, then I try to take care of them. And uh, I, I haven't heard of any serious things up there yet. So I guess that's about it. Are there any questions for John? Seeing none, um, moving along, uh, our town manager is going to speak about improving our financial reporting and our capital plan. Hey, hey Matt. Matt. What's up? Matt. Matt. Yes, Butch. Um, I hadn't quite finished about the Route 4 project. I think there's a couple of important information on that that we should cover while we're on roads, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, as you all know, they're they're going to start sometime in April to surface the road through the village. That'll be from the east to the west on Route 4 and from the north to the center of town on Route uh, 12 and uh, out 106 to the country club. There's going to be a two inch grind uh, um, and then resurfacing. Um, the bid opening for this for the contractors from the state is uh, is in March 5th. Uh, this I think is the most important thing that there are two informational meetings that will be held to discuss the project in greater detail. Uh, one for the residents and that's on February 25th at 1 p.m. and one for the businesses on March 3rd at 7 p.m. Uh, Bill, I don't know how those meetings are going to be conducted, if they're at the conference room or they're on Zoom. They'll be on Zoom, Butch. They'll be on Zoom. Okay. So stay tuned for further information about those two meetings. Uh, thanks, Matt. Okay. Any questions? We'll let Bill take it away then. Nikki, if you want to put up uh, the PowerPoint presentation, please, the one for financial reporting, please. <clears throat> Thank you. The, the, the other one, the financial reporting one, please. Technical difficulties. <clears throat> well, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do it without it. So this is life of PowerPoint and Zoom. So over the last uh, couple of months, a uh, group of staff and select board members have been working on an, uh, on updating our financial process, including a capital plan. Um, I do want to be clear that this does not reflect. Okay, there we go. This, this definitely does not reflect on any pa bad past, uh, past bad practices or management on anyone's part. Instead, we're focusing on transparency, 
and future financial obligations. So uh, we've made some progress here. We have designed a one-page financial statement that will be used by every department. We've also gathered financial data from 2015 to today. We built a prototype system to categorize revenue and expenses and display trends. And we've been again, and we began a comparison to audit, audited financials. Next slide, please. So here we're gonna have, as you can see, we'll have future revenue and expense reports that will fit on a single page and it will be identical format for every department. So there you, there you see the revenue versus less expense and then we'll have the net. So this will be, a, a, I think, a much more transparent system and um, also answer some more questions for residents. Um, next slide, please. So there's obviously more work to do. So we're gonna complete the review for accuracy. We're gonna review financial statements with our department heads. We'll finalize the format for revenue and expenditures based on feedback. We'll extend the prototype to the balance sheet and we're gonna launch the system. So stay tuned, there's more to come, please. Um, next slide, please. So also part of this financial process is working on a capital plan. So you might ask, what's the purpose of a capital plan? Well, one is to establish a financial plan. It's typically for five years for construction or acquisition of capital assets. Uh, it provides for planning of future financial resources and financing of projects. And it also identifies future financial resources required to operate and maintain capital assets once required. So next slide, please. So in building the plan, I'm working uh, with uh, BLCT using a lot of guidance from that agency. I'm also looking at other communities such as Colchester, Middle Middlebury and other surrounding communities. Um, the current plan will be, added, will be added to, we do have a current plan, but it, just, it needs to be tweaked and upgraded. So it needs to include the following. We need to include buildings there. So things like the wastewater treatment plant, the EMS building, town hall, infrastructure, things like roads, sidewalks, sewer piping, et cetera, uh, vehicles, trucks, ambulances, backhoes, et cetera. And then finally equipment, things like computers, communications, tools, et cetera. Uh, next slide, please. So kind of have the proposed timeline here is March, 2021. I'm proposing that we have a joint meeting between the Capital Budget Committee the select board and board of trustees in order to review the uh, current capital budget policy, which is passed back in October, 2017 to see if the current boards and the committee wants to want to continue with that or adopt a new policy uh, to de determine the financing methods. Uh, we want to pay as you go versus loan. Uh, to also discuss acquisition of vehicles policy. We also need to discuss other policies needed, such as debt management, a fraud prevention policy, et cetera. Uh, from March, 2021 to June, 2021, staff will continue to build on the existing plan and incorporate items such as buildings, roads, sewer piping, and et cetera. I will also meet with department heads to review current and future capital needs. Next slide, please. And then what I propose is in October, 2021, uh, the Capital Budget Committee re reviews the fiscal year 2023, 2027 capital budget. And in November, 2021, the committee would present that uh, capital budget to the select board. So, thank you. Do we have any questions for Bill? Yes, Charlie. Thank you, Matt. I'm sorry to ask another question, but Bill, I was wondering, the, this is great progress and terrific. Thank you for you and the select board uh, moving along this. Um, just wondering the software application that you're using uh, to, in order to consolidate all those financial uh, reports. I'm wondering how sustainable that is. Is it just using the existing software or are you exporting to Excel spreadsheets? <clears throat> What are you doing? Well, we are kind of transferring. Currently, we use a system of Nimric, <clears throat> pardon me, and it's not the most effective system. So we are trying to, we're looking at another system, trying to kind of transfer that to Excel spreadsheets 
and other formats to, to provide a, a much more transparent and much more readable system for folks. Yeah, the current system is just, it's not a, it's not a sustainable system for, for, um, for municipal uh, finance, financial management. So is that, is there an expense in the budget to upgrade the software for uh, municipal reporting or is you're just gonna? Uh, we should be able to do that in house. I don't foresee any, that should all be, we, we should have that covered. I don't foresee any additional um, expenses on that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Roger. Um, yeah, I have a question. I'm not sure if this is the right place to ask it or a comment. Um, I'd like to, to talk about reporting in general. Um, is this a good time to bring that up or would you prefer I leave it till later? That's fine. That's so I think one of the things that's frustrating to me as a citizen is keeping track of where the town is financially and in terms of achieving its goals at any given point in time. So I applaud all of these, these reporting approaches that, that have just been made. I think a goal that would be very useful would be to be doing these as a snapshot on a monthly basis, that this is the expenditures, this is what's been accomplished with those expenditures, this is how much the budget has been spent, and a little bit of an explanation of what's going on. That would just make it a lot easier for citizens to understand, kind of a, a dashboard of, of town performance. And that, that is, that should, that will be our plan. Maybe I wasn't clear on that. My apologies. I should have. No, great. That's wonderful. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, that is, that this should be, this will be a monthly, hopefully a monthly exercise. So to get, get the residents up to speed on where we are. Great. Wendy Marinian. Thank you very much, Wendy Marin. And thank you. Uh, my question is, do we already have a capital budget committee? And we if do. not, oh, because I was looking in our in the annual report for the description of it. Um, can you just, is it in the report? So, I don't believe so. No. Right, we didn't, right. We did not, we did not use the capital budget committee this year. So that's why it's not in there. Yeah, and we, I don't believe it was used last year as well. So that's why it's not been, but there is a, there is a capital budget committee. The, the current, can you describe it for who, who are members? Mary, um, do you know who the- Matt Maxim is a member. I'm one. I was a Jessica former Boys. member, yeah. Um, Roy, Roy Bates. Bates. Um, department heads all participate for their own department. Right. And um, the process is that um, early in uh, well, late summer, early fall, department heads get together with the select board and the manager and um, talk about the equipment and which is mostly equipment with um, bridge repairs and some other capital assets and um, they get together and they talk and then it goes to um, back and forth between the manager, finance staff and department heads and then it comes to the select board next. So just quickly, Wendy, basically we just serve as an advisory um, committee to, to help uh, bring some other eyes and expertise into. I know Alita's husband, uh, Jonathan, oh, also yeah. um, was on that committee. Um, so it's it's really just not leaving it all up to the select board, but to bring in people from within the community with different perspectives to, to look at that and make suggestions and work with the department heads. Could I just say one more Yes. Um, go ahead. No, go ahead, ahead. So if I understand you correctly, correctly, there's an advisory group of citizens that works with chairs of departments, including the, uh, uh, the chair of the select board and the chair of the trustees? Um, no? Well, 
it's anyway, but it's, it's a town it's a combination. Town, it's a town committee. It's a town committee. And is it are the citizens appointed by the select board? Yes. Great. And and so it will show up in annual reports. It's not in this one because it was inactive. Yes, there has always been. There has most usually been okay. a, a few pages of capital budget information in the town report. Okay, but it There's didn't make it this year. Report. Okay. okay. Yep. Let's Thank see. you for the clarification. Sure. And well, can I add to that, Matt? Yes. So we are looking at doing capital budgeting a little differently, Wendy, because really like before it was a vehicle replacement and small equipment purchases. So now that we're going to add in all these other things, we may well add more experts to that committee. And um, there's been some very interesting people who are now living in town who have great expertise about debts and taking on bonds and things like that. So we'll be reaching out to them too. Great, thank you. In consultation with our municipal accounting resource, um, they've advised us that our accounting direction must be adjusted to reflect the spirit of a, we're not a profit and loss concern. Um, government and public municipal administration is not um, a profit and loss situation. We are not profitable and our, our reports um, sometimes tend to let credence to our activity being profitable. That is not our case. We are not here to make a lot of money. We're here to make our budget work for what we need and what we need to do. And Wendy Spector is waiting with a question. Yeah, hi. Um, I think it's really great to hear your uh, report. And I was wondering, um, what about um, uh, parks, things like that? Could that be something that you put into this okay. capital um, planning? We are actively pursuing. Yes, that, would be, that would be that would be. Yeah, the list I had maybe was not I probably should have paraphrased or I should have uh, followed up on that. It's not necessarily comprehensive. And the infrastructure, right, that is important. And we were of course, we're actively looking at having a parks uh, manager or parks the subdivision, maybe not necessarily department, but yes, that that could very well fall under that category. Would be. Thank you. And Alita. Yeah, I'm just curious if the this capital budget will also have kind of annual maintenance on on various parts of the town, whether it be the buildings. Um, I mean, I it, it feel like we spent a lot of time over the years talking about trucks and stuff. And I would agree with you that it needs to be more than just, you know, what we're purchasing, but how are we, you know, what's sort of the punch list on each building um, to ensure that that constant maintenance is going to happen? And will there be, is it, it in the town budget, is there any idea of actually having a person whose job it would be to manage um, oversight of maintenance and maintenance could also include the parks. Well, annual, annual maintenance, maintenance, um, Alita is kind of a separate, that would go more in the operating budget, but if we're talking about more of a one-time uh, thing, a capital expense. It's so that, um, yes. Right, right. Like the HVAC replacement or something like that, or the air conditioning, you know, that, that would be more of a capital expense. So we got, got to make sure we separate those out. But that's, no, certain, I, I, that's certainly something we want to keep on our radar. Now, you raise a good point, Alita. We need to make sure that we are, especially now that we're, we've got, the, you know, we're focusing on town hall rejuvenation. We need to make sure that those maintenance expenses are included. Right. I guess I was looking at bigger things like knowing, okay, the town hall may need a new roof in five years. Right. Uh, that's, that's yes, those, yes, that would fall under a, more of a capital expense that's correct and, and actually planning ahead knowing i mean we did this in the school board with a sinking fund um which made it really easier to budget if you knew in five years you were dealing with two roofs and you know one garage um but did it really carefully um for five to you know three to five years out and that is that has historically been part of of the capital budgeting process i, I know a lot of attention is paid to trucks and graders and things but it's all everything in the capital budget. Um, and we actually two years ago had a very similar discussion about getting uh, 
thinking five years, 10 years, 20 years out. So that is a focus of the capital budget committee. I would just say from the town hall perspective, I guess being in the town hall and having read select board reports, I haven't seen that that level of attention to that particular building. When, when you started, when you did two years ago, the situation, um, as Matt's saying, is when the capital budget committee started a transition and um, some things were, um, what has been in the current ongoing process has been taken in there easily, but adding new things such as buildings and um, other significant um, changes, the parks and all of that, while it, that's operating budget, not capital budget, we have been since 2018 talking about making changes and making it significant and having our planning stepped up quite a bit. And the other piece is, is there's always that juggle of trying to, part of this process is to spread out the big ticket items over a number of years. So your most pressing need you know, if we need a new fire station this year, we're probably not going to put a lot of money into town hall for a couple of years. It, it, those those are discussions that are going on, but it is great input, and and I, I think it's valuable. Any other questions? We're about to move into the warning. Okay, so I just want to remind everybody that. Um, all of these articles this year will be voted by Australian ballot either on March 2nd between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. here at Town Hall, or you can get an absentee ballot beforehand. You can vote, vote early. Um, so I'm going to read the articles. Some of these we're going to just slide right through because there's really nothing we can do about them. Uh, some of them will need some explanation. I'll stop take any questions um, after each one. So let's move along. So article one, to see if the town will receive and act upon reports submitted by the town officers. Um, it's up to you if you want to, if you don't uh, accept them, I don't know what we do. We've never answered that question. Article two, to see if the town will vote to collect the town general highway school taxes and state education taxes on real property and all other taxes levied through the treasurer under the provisions of Title 32 Vermont Statutes Annotated Chapter 133 and fix the dates of payment as November 5th, 2021 and May 6th, 2022. Um, again, we'll vote on this on Tuesday, pretty straightforward. Artic oh, yes, Kareem. Sorry, thank you. Hi, everyone. Just a very quick question. Um, I know there's a lot of work happening in the background regarding the school, and it's going to be discussed at the uh, school school board. And by the way, there's a date out there. Will there also be discussions that will be taking place at select board regarding that upcoming expense, or will that only happen within um, within the framework of the of the school board? Typically, it happens in the school meetings. And the school board meetings um, that would be are, more than welcome to a meeting. Are, are you specifically talking about the school expense? I'm talking about, um, it's not directly related to this article, but ten, tangentially, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people are familiar with the fact that the school needs to be upgraded is falling apart. So there's a group that's looking into that, working very closely with the school board. And my question was whether any of those updates relating to that projects, uh, whether those will also be made at the select board. And I think it might be a good idea to just have updates that would be given to the select board also, because ultimately it will be an expense that will be shouldered by the taxpayers of the town. Of course, I would be more than welcome to submit updates to the select board. Uh, I think that would be... Um you know, the impetus would be on the school board to communicate that to the select board and, and bring that to them. But it's, it's a good, good point. That. We would welcome that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
there are no other questions. Um, Article three, to see if the town will vote to pay the town officers in accordance with Title 24 VSA section uh, 932 as follows, the town treasurer $12,000 per year, listers $25.76 per hour, constable $25.76 per hour, town clerk $32.47 per hour, and moderator $100 each time served. Any questions? Again, pretty straightforward. Article four, to see if the town will vote to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow money if necessary in anticipation of taxes for fiscal year 2021-2022 to defray current expenses and debts of the town and sewer departments. And this is just a traditional article that we have every year, which just gives them the authority to, to um, borrow money to meet operating costs until the taxes come due. So if there are no questions, Article 5. To see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $6,731,068, which includes the specified sums of money to operate each department and to raise by taxation the amount of $5,018,094, which is the necessary sum to defray operating costs for fiscal year 2021-2022. And at this point, um, I think uh, our town manager, Bill, will take us through this a little bit uh, in a little more detail. Uh, Nikki, will you uh, pull up that budget summary slide, please, or the summary uh, PowerPoint presentation, please? Thank you. Do you want to go to that, the first slide? Thank you. Okay. So you have before, there's the total operating budget. Uh, just to repeat what uh, Matt had mentioned, the total expenditures are $6,731,068. Revenues are $1,712,975. And again, to be raised in taxes, $5,018,094. It does result in a 2.9% increase, which includes the ESB bond payment. Uh, next slide, please. So in general government, uh, there's $585,424 in total expenditures and $23,200 in total revenues. Uh, that expenditure does include a new phone system that, and the reason for the replacement of that, that is a 15 year old system in town hall. And, and also we're doing it now because the, the mainframe of that telephone system is located in the ESB building, which is gonna be renovated in the next year. Uh, next slide, please. The highway department, uh, there's $2,020,222 in total expenditures and $177,900 in total revenues. Uh, the highway includes uh, two vehicle replacements, and we've also removed a snowblower, a loader, and a dump truck from this budget. And hopefully with spring coming, we'll be able to uh, save on that equipment and um, keep it in good shape for next year because we'll definitely need it. So, uh, next, next slide, please. Uh, the Welcome Center, we have $72,201 in total expenditures. $3,000 in total revenues. Um, and just a note that $35,000 was moved from special articles and now is in the operating budget. Next slide, please. Uh, said EMS uh, fire department. Uh, we have the, the ambulance department where we have $1,232,835 in total expenditures and $555,000 in total revenues. And with fire, the fire department, we have $320,250 in total expenditures and $17,500 in total revenues. Next slide, please. And just to kind of round out the summary, uh, communications and the town police, uh, the communications dispatch, uh, we have $375,650 in total expenditures $69,730 in total revenues. And for town police, 
We have $418,475 total expenditures and obviously no revenues because that, that is a contract between the town and the village. And that's my summary. Thank you. Are there questions on Article 5? Yes, Roger. Uh, yeah, I think I had Roger up there first. He's muted. Sorry about that. Are we going to go through this in detail and address um, the individual um, departmental and other budget lines, or or is is this where we would comment on anything like that? I think as questioned. So if you had a particular question about a particular item, uh, just in the interest of time. Okay. Well, I have a couple of questions about what we just saw. Um, has have we been looking into sharing? heavy equipment with other local municipalities? That, that's something we could uh, possibly look at. We do have mutual aid agreements with other municipalities. So maybe that's something we could expand on and something to investigate. I mean, I'm looking at it as a potential cost savings. Um, you know, do you, does everybody need the biggest kind of dump truck at the same time? And I don't know, that, that may well be a stupid question, but I think if we're looking for ways to become more efficient, that's that's a potential avenue. Sure. And then the other question I have is why the Chamber of Commerce was moved from an article to the wel to the Welcome Center budget. Um, of all last year's articles for funding non-town organizations, that one got the largest no vote. So why are we being why why is the opportunity to to make decisions about that being taken away? We, we, answer. we uh, have <clears throat> the welcome center is a very important function in the business community of Woodstock. It is an information center. It <clears throat> is um, where people come and get what they need, maps and other articles that they need to find their way around the town and village. And it is, Woodstock was a, a sad location for what the Welcome Center provides before we had the Welcome Center. When the Welcome Center was first opened, the select board in place at that time felt it very important that the Welcome Center be staffed and um, that the select board was responsible for the building, et cetera, because it's on village property leased to the town. And um, it is for our benefit and the benefit of the business community that we have a welcome center. A town without a welcome center at this point in time would be in trouble. And it was decided, it's been talked about in years past, Roger, but it was decided this year that we would bring it into the operating budget rather than, rather than leave it out there with the um, special articles because it's an operation that we support and we sponsor and um, we brought it under the town operating budget for, for that reason. Uh, could, I, could I make an additional comment? Oh, please. So I absolutely agree that Woodstock needs a welcome center, but I think it would behoove us going forward to really look seriously. This has nothing to do with the Chamber of Commerce, but is that the best way to staff the Welcome Center? Have we really looked into that? And, and I, I do think it's, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I do think it's inappropriate to move the single largest no vote total out of the decision of the, of the individual decision. So I, I understand it's a done deal at this point, but, but I really think it would behoove us to look at whether or not this is the most efficient way to staff that welcome center. Thank you. And I would just point out in normal years, we would be able to address this and, and, and make changes to the budget at the open meeting. 
So it wouldn't be uh, um, completely out of, out of the citizens purview to, to address that. Um, Dave and Cindy Cook. Yes, hi. I <clears throat> just want to get an example of what a revenue might be, for example, from the fire department or the ambulance department. Well, for the ambulance department, it would, it would be an ambulance um, user fee. Uh, for Dave, do you want to comment on the fire department? What's your what an example of a user? Please. Uh, I was trying. I kept moving on the screen and couldn't click fast enough. <laughs> That's okay. uh, so, Thank you. <laughs> fire department revenue is typically alarm permits. Um, for everybody that has a fire alarm system, they register it. Uh, that comes to us. Also, any fines that we may uh, levy. Um, those are really the two biggest ones. Um, revenues are mainly grants, though, any grants we receive. The fire department really doesn't have any uh, income. Very small. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes and Kareem? Yes, hi. And by the way, hello, Dave and Cindy, and welcome to town. There are new neighbors. Uh, um, it, it connected kind of to Dave's question, and I know it was discussed this year, but um, I, I just want to ask whether it's still on standby, the decision around that. There's not an insignificant amount of uncollected ambulance fees. And I was wondering if the select board would consider going into this coming year to utilize potentially a collection agency in order to collect a certain percentage of that. Kareem, that has been um, over many years that has been discussed time and time again. And um, David, would you like to comment on how that, what? Sure. There's a yep. lot of complications involved with that. Go ahead, please, David. Yep, so currently almost all of our towns that we contract with any unpaid bills, they reimburse us. Um, the bulk of the unpaid bills come from Woodstock residents. And over the years, the town has adopted soft billing, if you will, we'll go after them in-house three or four times, set up payment plans, make attempts to contact them, um, and so forth. While it does work, uh, there are quite a few that just either, A, they were injured here in Woodstock, passing through, gave us the wrong information, or can't afford it, and the town has never decided to pursue those. We did have a very good discussion probably four years ago about going after residents or non-residents that are injured in Woodstock that don't pay and go into the collection systems. Um, but the lawyer said, you can't do that. It's either everybody or nobody. And at the time, the select board and the town manager did not want to go after residents for collection purposes. All right, th thank you. Just a follow-up question. Uh, I understand the rationale. And just to uh, give some illustration to the conversation, that total amount, David, would you please uh, share it uh, on an annual basis on average, the uncollected amount? Um, yes, if it's not already, I, we can put it in there, yes. I don't, I'm just asking, you know, what the number is approximately, just, just for the record. Uh, do, yeah. do you know off the top of your head? If, if you oh. don't, it's fine. No, off the top of my head, I, I think we're projecting this year $50,000. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's it, thank you. And uh, uh, Wendy Marinin had a question, and then I'll get to you, Jill. Thank you, uh, once again. Uh, if this isn't the appropriate time for this question, please redirect me, but in the highway department budget, um, I'm curious about the difference between paving, patching, and grading. I had I didn't hear any mention in the reports about regrading roads that are unpaved in the town and village. And uh, I was just wondering if that's a, it's certainly a different, uh, what do I wanna say, technical approach. And I'm wondering how that fits into the budget. Well, the regrading tends to be more of an annual operating cost. 
Wendy, is my understanding, and speaking to our highway supervisor. And so some of it, yeah, uh, as a former select board member, um, most of that cost is gonna be labor, which you're paying regardless of whether he's running the grader or running a, a dump truck or whatever. But the only other piece of that, which would fall into more of a capital budget would be the gravel that you would use to add to the roads. So that it would be in, in, those, in two locations in your budget because a big piece of it is just labor. And, and I guess another piece that actually is in capital would be the cost of your road grader. The, the equipment. The equipment itself. Right. Very so significant. Right. Thank you for that. And can I, I have a follow up question. Um, I had raised this uh, technical question in the past. I'm not sure if it can be answered quickly now. Is there a cost differentiation between putting down more gra gravel to fill in potholes or scraping the existing gravel to redistribute what's already down? Again, it, uh, that would be up to the highway department. It depends on how much of it has washed away. Yeah. And, and you have to consider, um, you see this road that, you know, maybe a foot deep of gravel and you think you can just go down, but there's a sub base. If it's built properly, there's a sub base and a base and, and then that top layer. So you are a little bit limited. I, I think it, it, it's really case by case. Some of the roads are very well built and some of them are, very, very poorly built. There are certain hills I know from driving them for years and years that have a lot of clay underneath them and they just don't hold up. Um, and residents can help with that by using less of that right foot as they go up the hills. <laughs> we, we also, Matt, could I make? Yeah. Uh, Wendy, we also, uh, we do dust control on the back roads and the dust control, if we don't do the proper dust control, uh, we lose several inches, I don't know the number of surface to dust. Uh, if you follow a car down the road or a truck, you and you're behind them on a road that hasn't had control, you'll see that. But we do, use, we do reuse the, the material when they grade the road, uh, they do the material that's already there. So if, and thank you. In summary, this shows up in three or four different categories of operating expenses. So it's hard to make it a line item is what you're saying. But um, I, I just ask if it's uh, prudent given the number of those kinds of roads to understand the, the expenses that are, that are involved in, in a way, in the accounting way. I don't know. I'm not one that can say how to do it. I'm just wondering if there's, if it's something to put into your um, planning, uh, your budgeting and capital plan. Uh, so can, I'd like to answer yeah, that. Jill, I was just yeah. So Wendy, the, the work that's being done, looking at the financial reporting will make all of those questions much easier. So we have many, many different lines in the budget that can be added together more easily so we can track things. We'll be able to track a line called salaries, a line called, um, employee benefits will be able, and we'll, we could, maybe we can have a line that says paving of um, gravel road paving of asphalt roads we'll be able to manipulate the numbers much better to answer queries like that so it is a possibility to extract to understand it as a imp, the the cost impacts of unpaved roads versus so. paved okay thank you david did you want to um, yeah, just running the highway department, I wanted to just clarify that a little bit. So it, it may not be in layman's terms, but it is in the budget. So if you go through and you see spot gravel, they typically put in $100,000 a year. That is for maintenance of back roads, non-paved roads. Pavement, pavement patch or paving, that is for paved roads. So it, it is in there, but it, it may be not what you're looking for. And Jill, did you have another? Yes, I wanted to go back to the question of revenues. We had two questions about revenues. Um, one of the things that uh, Kareem has done a lot of work on this year is making sure that we look at our revenues and see how we can increase revenues so that we can 
uh, our expenses go up all the time and we need to keep balancing expenses and revenues. So things like looking at the planning and zoning um, fees that we charge, maybe there are opportunities there to increase those. I know the town clerk's office is looking at uh, different things that can be increased that aren't regulated by state fees. So when we do budgeting, we have to look at revenues and expenses. That was in all of those different guises. Are there other questions on the budget? Article five. Don't see any, we'll move along to Article 6. To see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $1,346,397.50, which includes $1,082,397.50 from user fees and $264,000 from other revenues to pay the current expenses and debt of the sewer department for fiscal year 2021-2022. Do any of you want to, do you want to touch on that at all? Or? I don't have anything extra. Okay. No. Any questions? Yes, Kareem. Yes, hi. Um, again, a tangential question. Um, wh when, when will the invoices be produced uh, uh, for the upcoming fiscal year for the payment of the TAFs for $2.8 million bond? When are those invoices scheduled to be produced and will they be commingled with the regular user fees for the uh, sewer users or will they be separate bills? Those are, those are separate bills. That's going to be upcoming. We're, we're still kind of working on that because we you know of our new sewer billing policy. We're looking at going to quarterly a billing. So that's going to be, I don't have an exact time when those will go out, but like if you refer, like the current the current invoices that you're being sent out now, that's for fiscal year 21. So. Yep. I okay, so but, in the town hall yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but it's not going to happen in the immediate future. It's going to take at least a few yeah. months, is what I'm asking. Yeah. Oh, okay, yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank yes, you. That's correct. Right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. That's it. Any other questions on Article Six? Okay. Article seven, to see if the town of Woodstock will vote to exempt the Norman Williams Public Library from paying taxes on their parking lot, specifically through either or both of the exemptions listed below for the parking lot of the Norman Williams Public Library for a period of five years. A, an exemption from local property taxes, including local education, highway and town general, and B, exemption from the education property taxes and to raise by property taxation a sum of money to pay the exempted amount to the appropriate entity. And the appropriate entity would be the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions about Article 7? Yes, Wendy, you're muted. Um, I recently attended, a, I think it was a village trustee meeting where it was proposed that some of the parking places be trans behind the Norman William Library be turned into permit parking on an annual basis. Um, and I'm curious if how someone could just explain the um, relationship, if there is one, between the income that the parking in behind Norman Williams Library and where it goes and this request for exemption. Jeffrey, I think. Yes. Jeffrey. Yeah, Wendy, um, the village actually leases that parking, uh, some of those parking spaces uh, in that lot. And the income from the meters that uh, are open to the public in that lot as well as the income that will come from the four spaces that we will lease much as we do in the mechanic street employee parking area uh, goes to pretty much break even with the expense of, of leasing that area. So it's kind of a break even proposition. And that's how it works. So the village is paying Norman Williams library to use that parking lot? Correct. Part of it, 
And now part of that is part being used, part of it's being used by empl employees of the, uh, uh, the library and part of it's used by the court um, as well, although they pay for that aspect as well. So that's how it's being uh, divided up. Any other questions on article seven? Thank you, Jeff. Sure. Okay. Article eight, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $1,500 for the purpose of having the public trust funds audited and approve the expenditure of $1,500 from income of the trust funds to pay for the annual audit. Are there any questions about article eight? Excellent. Article nine, shall the town, whoops, oh yes, Wendy. I'm sorry, <laughs> like David said, things move around on the screen and it's then. It's fine. <laughs> um, my question about the auditing for public trust funds, and sorry, now my dog is. Um, the question is, I noticed a change in reporting in the town report um, that the annual report has always included a um, a breakdown of, of the various funds and the total and uh, on a separate page. Which is, I'm so sorry. Um, when, Wendy, if you mute yourself, I can answer your question for you. So I am a trustee of public funds. I'm a trustee of public funds and this year the audit is not complete. So we were not able to include that detail. You're muted, Wendy. Wendy, you're muted. I think she's okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Nick Selden. Hi. Sorry about that. You know, I, I'm. I apologize. Do you mind if I? backtrack just a moment. I was trying to figure out how to raise my hand. I've never done that before <laughs> on my phone. Actually, that brings up a great point. I was going to mention, you know, anyone, if we need to backtrack a little bit, I, I understand this is a little new to all of us. So very much so. As long as we keep it brief and keep moving along, I'm fine with that. Go for it. I appreciate that. Um, there was a question about uh, the town raising funds to pay for the property tax that the library would otherwise owe. Um, one thing that I would like to point out for consideration, I'm, I'm an attorney here in Woodstock. Um, I litigate some cases, a lot of cases in the Woodstock courthouse. And I know that that library is towing my jurors from time to time when they accidentally park in the incorrect spot. And I would just like to put out there for food for thought, if, if we are as taxpayers essentially paying for this lot, perhaps as a contingency, um, the library should not be towing uh, public jurors who are doing their constitutional duty by uh, listening to a court case. I think it's a way to disincentivize the entire court process um, and they're not paying for the lot, we are as taxpayers. Um, so I, I would ask uh, the select board to consider that perspective when making a decision. Board. It's, it would be the trustees, but it's also, you know, those spots are not the ones that they're paying for. Correct, Jeffrey? <laughs> we got a thumbs uh, up. My understanding was it's their spots, the ones that they are using. Are those, are those the ones that are being proposed to be uh, tax free? Nick, uh, Nick I'm, I'm not quite sure about your question. You know that uh, jurors, that uh, the meters were bagged when we had meters around the Village Green, and those were bagged for use by jurors. That's, uh, yes, but for jury draw, where you get 40 or 50 or 60 or maybe even 100 people to the courthouse, there aren't enough bagged meters. I'm, I'm going back to my last jury trial before COVID, February of 2020. Um, I had a member of my jury pool get towed uh, during his during his day there because he parked in a library space and I just well, feel 
yeah, I hear your, I hear what you're saying. Perhaps Chief Blish could comment on this. Yeah, I'm sure. We haven't towed anybody from a metered parking space, but to clarify, there are four, maybe five spaces that are specifically set aside for library staff. So as part of the lease for that lot, which is about $11,000 a year, um, the village or, or the town leases that lot. We have, I think it's 18 or 19 leased uh, metered spaces. The courthouse sublets, uh, I think about 11 of those spaces, which leaves eight spaces for the, us to uh, charge meters, meters for, except on Saturdays, people get from the public can park in those courthouse spaces with the meter. But aside from that, Nicholas, you may be talking about four or five of the actual library staff parking lots that are held in uh, aside. Uh, and maybe that's what they got towed from. I don't know. I don't recall it towing anybody in the last ever from that lot. So if that's what it is, then yeah, yes. we don't have any control over that. That is, those spots are specifically reserved in the lease for library staff parking. So that would be on them too. And I, and I don't know if this speaks to your issue or not, but we don't have any control over that. Uh, right. It, it was those spaces. It was library staff. So am I correct that library staff spaces are the ones that the taxpayers of Woodstock are going to be responsible for? Well, I don't know. It's a, it would be in terms of the lease, I suppose, because okay. it's, it's part of the lease is the library reserves four or five spaces. I can't remember which um, for their staff. That's part of the lease, and part of the lease is that their property, really, and they can do with it what they will and tow who, what, who they will if somebody parks there uh, improperly. Um, They're also very well identified, Chief uh, and Nick. Um, everything is signed, and everything is well signed and marked. Um, and, you know, for jury duty, anytime we issue a ticket for somebody who's on jury duty, I'll say this much. Uh, this, I've asked the courthouse staff just to, to let me know. And uh, generally, we'll just void the ticket. Uh, we don't even count it against their their two um, validated parking things that they get. But we try to be very fair and, uh, and cognizant of the fact that the courthouse is in Woodstock, uh, and part of that, part of having that benefit, I think, of having the courthouse in Woodstock is making sure we treat jurors and, and uh, folks that are utilizing that courthouse very fairly. Right. My specific question was whether those four spaces from which jurors are being have been towed are the Woodstock taxpayers uh, paying the property tax that go on those four spaces. I don't know the answer to your question. <laughs> okay, I, think that I would thought be that a was a small what... piece of it. It would be a small percentage of it. But I would okay. also suggest perhaps just a, a bit of communication in the future between the courthouse and the library when you're having jury draw like that to maybe have them put a cone out in those spots. Right. Well, I think I got the answer to my question. Thank okay. you. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we're on Article 9. Um, uh, we just finished 8, if there are no other questions. So Article 9, shall the town of Woodstock raise, appropriate, and expend the sum of $86,000 for the purpose of paving the town and village roads? And I think uh, Butch spoke about this earlier. Anyway. If there are no questions. All right, Article 10, the election of town officers for the ensuing year as required by law. Um, there are a number of, of positions that are open, including select board, um, auditors, et, et cetera. They're all listed there. If it, this, I think, would be an appropriate time if there's anyone who is running for one of these offices who would like to make a very brief statement, uh, it would be appropriate. Um, I know. Uh, Jill, do you want to, since you're right up at the top of my screen, do you want to say a couple words? Sure, I will. Um, so I've been on the select board for the past four years, and I'm running in this election to continue that position. Um, I think we all live in a wonderful town, and we're all very proud of it, and we're reaching a critical moment. Um, 
So we want to preserve, I think we all want to preserve what we all love about Woodstock, but we've got to recognize that we have to take steps to ensure the future well-being. Sometimes what we did in the past isn't enough to maintain our streets, our sewer lines, and, and the, the ambience that we live with and the values that we all have here and recognize. So while being a select board member, I put in a lot of long hours to understand the challenges that we face and begin the process of addressing them. And they are long hours, but I've really enjoyed that work. I've enjoyed working with my fellow members and laying this groundwork for the future. So I want to continue that job. I think that with a, with a vision and follow through, we can make town government more effective and we can meet these challenges of our aging infrastructure. We can strengthen our business community, enhance all of our community resources and really work to build a sustainable future. Thank you. Okay, and Ray has his hand up. Yeah, hi, I'm um, Ray Bourgeois and some of you know me, some of you don't. I am running unopposed, um, but I am I, I'm, I'm running because I wanna see the town um, improve itself. I wanna see a capital budget that's workable. Um, and I wanna see the town get ready for COVID, um, the end of COVID, which may be sooner than later. Um, I just think there's a lot of important things that need to be done to, to, to get the town ready for that. The roads are a mess. I know the state's gonna be plowing those, uh, uh, repairing those. And um, I just think we need to uh, move forward and, and get things going. Um, but in either way, whether you want to vote for me or not, I think it's important you get out and vote and, and you look at the articles and vote on the budget. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Great. It looks fine, Joe. You're a little backlit, but you're all right. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Thank you. So I'm Joe Swanson and the name you know and trust for the change we need. What do I mean by that? The name you know and trust. You've seen me doing the hard Oh, I think you got muted, Joe. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened there. Yep. You've seen me doing the hard, dangerous work, rescuing people and their pets from rapidly rising floodwaters during a read. During hard work, grant writing and improving our infrastructure. I wrote the grant that brought in the EV chargers station on the east end. That has put us on the roadmap for Tesla and Plug In America and made Woodstock a destination for EV travelers. I've been a town auditor and have an MBA in institutional knowledge to understand the numbers and how the budget works. But the change we need, what do I mean by that? The select board in its current configuration is in a gridlock and is not working the best for Woodstock. As a select board member, I wanna foster com uh, community cooperation, work with other select board members, the town manager and community stakeholders um, to bring Woodstock forward. I have a long tradition of civic duty and I see no higher honor than serving as an elected official to Woodstock. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Is there anyone else who's running for any of these offices who wants to say a few words? Great. Article 11 then. Shall the town of Woodstock appropriate the sum of $500 to Green Mountain RSVP and Volunteer Center of Windsor County to develop opportunities for people age 55 and older to positively impact the quality of life in the community of Woodstock through volunteer service. And I think all these special articles, if there's somebody who wants to say a few words, um, as long as you can keep it brief, we'll, we'll do that just for informational purposes. Yep, one minute. 
I don't see anybody. So Article 12. And if I get too far ahead and you need to jump back, we can do that. But Article 12, shall the town appropriate the sum of $3,247 to help support outpatient mental health and substance abuse services by the staff of Healthcare and Rehabilitation Services, Inc. So I don't see anybody raising their hand on this one. Article 13, shall the town vote to appropriate and raise by property taxes the sum of $51,250 for the Norman Williams Public Library to help support the operations and maintenance of the library. These funds are over and above the budgeted support that the town provides to the li this library fiscal year 2020-2021. Is there anybody who? Oh. I don't see anybody. No. Um, this is uh, Ron Miller. Oh, I, yes. oh hi, Ron. I, um, hi, I'm the uh, president of the board of the library, and um, we do appreciate the support that the town uh, gives. Uh, for our operations, um, the taxpayers are providing about 40% of our total operating budget. Um, th that includes what uh, the select board has put into their budget, uh, plus this special article. Um, and it's crucial to, um, to our continuing uh, to serve the community at, at the high level that we, that we try to provide. We raise 60% of our budget uh, on our own through our fundraising. Um, and so we feel the town is getting a really fine library for, for the size of the town and the amount of uh, taxpayer money that's going into it. Um, so we, we hope that the voters will agree and will uh, support us for another year. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. All right, Article 14. Shall the town of Woodstock appropriate the sum of $30,000 the Ottaquichi Health Foundation OHF is a nonprofit community resource that provides funding and support for individuals with limited financial means to help meet critical health and wellness needs, such as medical and dental care, eyeglasses, hearing aids, dentures, prescription co-payments, and short-term caregiver services. Yes, Mary. Hi, this is Mary Young Grulo. I'm uh, serve on the board of the Adequichi Health Foundation. I'm also the vice president and um, I'm here today just to uh, thank the town for uh, the support that we've received previously. Uh, we hope again that we would um, receive a positive vote this year. It's important to note that the Adequichi Health Foundation grants about $170,000 annually to those um, who require assistance for health and wellness needs. We serve nine towns based on our original article of incorporation and our founder who was Gertrude Mertens. And um, we uh, received the majority of our requests from the town of Woodstock. Last year, the, I'm sorry, the annual report is uh, at the press right now. We're working out some of the details for 2020. In 2019, uh, we gave uh, over $120,000 just to Woodstock residents alone. Woodstock takes up the largest portion of the pie of our requests and we're very happy that we uh, have the funds to support those requests. So thank you. Thank you, Mary. Okay, Article 15. Shall the town of Woodstock vote to raise, appropriate, and expend the sum of $42,000 to the support of Pentangle Arts to provide services to the residents and students of the town of Woodstock? Alita, do you want to say something? Or? Yeah, I, I would just um, say I, we thank the town um, for the support every year. This is a level funded request. Um, this, this, the combined from the special article in the town budget represents 20% of our budget. So it is, it is a significant portion. Um, we certainly hope to open our doors. We did have a summer season, which was attended by nearly 1,200 people. And we, we really hope to open our doors once everybody is vaccinated by midsummer. Um, but again, thank you. And 46 years we've been going, we will beat this pandemic and be back. 
So Article 16, shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of $1,500 for the support of Senior Solutions, formal, formally Council on Aging for Southeastern Vermont, for help to support seniors and their families who are trying to remain at home and not be placed in a nursing home. Is there anybody who wishes to speak? Okay, seeing none. Article 17, shall the town appropriate the sum of $3,000 to Southeastern Vermont Community Action to assist Woodstock in responding to the emergency needs of the community and providing all available and applicable services to families and individuals in need. Is there anybody here that wants to speak for Sevka? Seeing none, Article 18, shall the town appropriate the sum of $1,250 to support programming of the Spectrum Teen, Teen Center. Our objective is to engage teens in healthy activities and make youth feel supported, welcomed, and included. There is no charge to attend our program. Anybody wish to say anything about this? Okay. Article 19, shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of $1,466 for the support of the Public Health Council of the Upper Valley to help continuing public health coordination for residents in the areas of substance misuse, elder care, oral health, emergency preparedness, and healthy living. I don't see anybody raising their hand. Article 20, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate from the general fund the sum of $25,000 to help support the home health, maternal and child health, and hospice care provided in patients' homes and in community settings by the visiting nurse and hospice for Vermont and New Hampshire. I would like to say on a personal note, my father spent four, year, uh, four months in hospice care this past summer and fall, and um, this is probably one of the greatest values um, to give this money to this organization, letting somebody die with dignity in their own home on their own terms is the best final gift that we can give to anybody. So I wholeheartedly support this. Article 21, shall the town of Woodstock appropriate the sum of $2,500 for Windsor County mentors for youth mentoring services provided to the to the children in Windsor County. Excuse me. Is there anybody? Article twenty two. Shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of two thousand five hundred dollars to support the mission of of Wise. Women's Information Services, Inc. in providing free crisis intervention and support services to victims of domestic and sexual violence and stalking. Is there anybody here? I don't see any hands going up. Article 23, shall the town of Woodstock vote to appropriate the sum of 40,000 $400 as the town share of service for the Woodstock Area Council on Aging to run the Thompson Senior Center. The Thompson Senior Center is an important community resource providing daily meals, medical and area transportation, and an array of health, educational and social services that assist residents to age well. I see Deanna is on here. Hi, thank you. I'm Deanna Jones and I'm the executive director for the Thompson Senior Center. Um, as an essential service, the Thompson has not missed one day of meals and services since the pandemic began. Um, we were active in town emergency planning and uh, response to community members isolating at home. 
Our home delivered Meals on Wheels has had 88 new recipients and served over 12,300 meals in the past year, an increase up from just over 9,000 the year prior. Our curbside meals replace dining room meals and serve more than 400 people and has served more than 400 people curbside. The Thompson has provided grocery shopping services, medical equipment, daily check-in calls, and evolved our programming and services to try to keep community members engaged and safe through our aging at home services. We reach more than 60% of the people age 65 and older in our community, while the average senior center reaches only 11%. Um, with an average expense budget of $600,000, the total 51,000 that we ask from the town of Woodstock is just one of the critical components of, um, to funding our operations, and it represents about 8% of our budget. We work very hard to fundraise, write grants, and receive donations from participants, and utilize all of our resources while carefully managing our expenses. We're so thankful for the support and grateful to be in the town of Woodstock to provide these services. Um, I'm pleased to be here and answer any questions that there might be as well, but thank you. Thank you, Deanna. Um, Liza, did you have uh, something to add? I did. I just, uh, I have the, I'm Liza Degnan, live here in Woodstock and have the extreme good fortune of chairing the Thompson Board of Directors and have for a number of years. And it's a wonderful organization. I know you all know that. Um, but I just, I just felt like letting out a cheer for the Thompson in this particular year, which has been so very challenging. Um, and Deanna and her team have been so very successful, particularly for the residents of Woodstock, for the other communities that we, uh, that we support as well. But thank you for your support, for your curbside lunches, and for making sure that your neighbors and friends uh, get, make their way to Meals on Wheels when they need it. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Liza. And Roger? I just wanted to say that that um, I find the Thompson to be extraordinarily efficiently and compassionately run. And I think it's it's a great example of, of how a, a, a nonprofit or a not-for-profit can, can be a mission-driven yet effectively use the resources that are allocated to it. Thank you. All right, Article 24. Shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of $2,800 for the support of the Woodstock Area Job Bank to connect individuals and businesses with members of our community who are seeking work and volunteer opportunities? I don't see any hands raised. Article 25. Shall the town of Woodstock vote to appropriate the sum of $6,000 for Woodstock WCTV8 public access television to help support coverage of ongoing events within the town of Woodstock? And I would point out they are helping facilitate all of this right now. Rachel's here. If you want to say a couple words, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm the new executive director of uh, Woodstock Community Television. Um, this summer, we had our previous director, Macy Lawrence, who was the real face of the community television, retire. So between COVID and the retirement of Macy, we've been through a lot of transitions, but I'm looking forward to making um, the TV station an even stronger and um, more involved community resource. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. And Roger, did you have something to add? Well, uh, this is just in general about all of these articles. Is that appropriate to sure. bring up now? Absolutely. I would find this much easier to understand if we created a standard request form um, for all of the, the organizations that are seeking the town support. Because um, you're kind of wading through a bunch of organizations, some of which one might know and some of which one doesn't know anything about. Um, and, and I'd like to see a kind of a standard request form that would include persons served, Woodstock 
citizen served, um, you know, it's, this is obviously something that would have to be developed. But for me, that would be a much more helpful way of understanding than, than these kind of straight narratives that, that we're being presented with. Thank you. Yeah, we, Thank you. We, that's good input. And we could certainly encourage that. But generally, these are by petition, and they have to be warned as the petition is written. So some of these come from out of town, but but I, I don't think there'd be anything to keep us from coming up with a standard format that we could suggest to organizations to help them submit it. It's, it's a good idea. Allison. Matt, hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, to that end, um, nobody spoke to Sevka and uh, to WISE, and Charlie and I both work with constituents who have so benefited from the incredible services that SEVCA and uh, WISE provide. As we know, to go to WISE first, as we know, domestic violence knows no socioeconomic uh, sector. It, uh, we've had many Woodstock women, uh, in particular women, uh, benefit from the incredible services that are offered by WISE. So I encourage you all to support uh, the good work of WISE. Um, and in terms of SEVCA, if anyone's read about the Everyone Eats program, which has had very high profile, helped give out thousands of meals all over Windsor County, that uh, SEVCA has been the lead organizer and coordinator for that program statewide. Uh, they provide everything from stores to serve our low income uh, uh, Vermonters to uh, helping with repairs. Uh, many low income Woodstockers have benefited from SEVCA coming in and just like cover coming in and helping with uh, home and home repairs. So these are two uh, very pillars of our supporting our, our community in ways you may not always see, but ways that are critically important. Thank you, Allison. Um, Dave and Cindy. Yes, hi, I have a question about the, the articles in general that are after the ones for operating costs. How do, how do we as voters know what the impact on the tax rate is going to be by when we decide to support or not support one? There is a page in the, um the town report that gives you a layout of what, what the cost is for those cost per, per person for ta on taxes. Page 36, 36 in the town thank report. Thank you, Matt. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, one other thing before we uh, close this meeting, I wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, if you have the town report, you'll notice that it is dedicated to our retired um, zoning administrator of 25 years, Michael Brands. Um, just want to take a moment to recognize Michael and also Paul Wilbeson, who um, retired from the Lister's office this past year. Um, two people that have given a ton of time to Woodstock over the years, um, done an, a professional and out, an outstanding job. So. You know, if, if we were all here in person, we would, we would give them a big round of applause. And I also wanted to point out that this is Butch Sutherland's last official select board meeting. So also a round of applause and a uh, huge thank you to Butch for not only that, but his years as fire chief. So. Thank you, Roger. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, so tell me to shut up if it isn't. Um, since this is kind of the proxy for town meeting, I have a couple of more general comments that I'd like to make. Um, is that appropriate? Sure. Um, so as I said about reporting for the for the the other organizations that are looking for for funding, I think it would also be valuable for us for us as taxpayers to have a much more data-driven and metric and outcomes-based reporting from the town departments that that are that are part of the budget, the general budget that 
and you know, obviously each one of these would have to work on a set of metrics and outcomes, but it's very hard based on, on a, essentially the narratives that we have to make cost benefit analyses about, about how well and how effectively the budget for any individual department is being spent. So I, I would propose that, that something that be done for, for this year and as you're working on the kind of general reporting that you also incorporate a lot more metrics and incorporate a lot more outcomes and, and essentially let us, let us look at the cost effectiveness. Um, I'd also like to propose, and I don't know how controversial this is or not, but one of the things that makes it difficult to roll up information is because we have two different entities running this, this municipality. And I, for one, do not see a particular advantage in that. And I could certainly be wrong. There may be great reasons to do it, but I would like to, ex I, but, but I think we would, we would be well served to explore the implications of, of combining those two, ent those two entities of government into one. Thank you. You are right on the 10 to 15 year schedule for that to come up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it has to do with cattle grazing on the green, as far as I know. Um, Charlie, and then Jeff. Yes. Uh, thank you, Matt. And I do agree with the notes that in the chat that you guys have run a very good meeting. So thank you very much uh, for all the preparation you did for it. Um, I just had one question about highways, um, and that is on Route 12 North, as you're headed uh, still within the village, as the river is on the right, the brook, I'm not sure the name of it, right by the dam, there's substantial erosion that continues there right before the section that got repaired. So I don't know if, uh, if the village or the highway crew is looking at that, but from the other side of the falls, when you're looking up, you can see the erosion there, and it's pretty, uh, it, it looks like it could threaten the embankment there. Um, the, the second thing is that usually um, your elected state representatives foist themselves upon you uh, at a town meeting. We're not doing that, um, but uh, Senator Clarkson and I are going to have a meeting next Saturday, which is an open meeting to ask your legislators questions, get an update, and I'll post that Zoom link in, uh, in the Woodstock listserv and also in the Front Porch Forum. So there's an opportunity to talk in, in a free discussion about any issues that you think that we should be thinking about at the state and get an update of what's going on in the legislature. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Jeffrey, you had something to... Yes, thanks, Matt. Uh, first, I just wanted to thank, uh, I'm seeing it in the chat, but I wanted to say publicly to thank the select board, the municipal manager and our, and our uh, town and village employees. Uh, this has been a wonderful presentation and I really think the public input and questions have been very good as well. I would like to point out going back to article three um, where we discussed to see if the, uh, the, uh, the town would vote to pay the town officers. Um, and I just want the public to know that you don't see the stipend that is usually given to the select board members because they voted to not have that in the budget and to forego that stipend for the, at least for this next year. And I, I applaud that. Um, th they work so hard uh, uh, that uh, it's hard for the public to understand uh, how much work they do um, uh, with no compensation for the year going forward. Uh, the village trustees have also decided to forego their stipend for the year forward. So, but I really applaud the select board for what's happened today. Thank you very much. Thanks. I would point out too that, that Jill did a lot of work and went to a training on how to run this Zoom meeting and gave us some very invaluable input. Um, so that that is um, a thank you to you, Jill. For, for, for me, it made it work. So thanks. If nobody has anything else, I'm going to go catch up to the Boy Scout troop who's very active today. Move the I don't think we have to since it's not an official meeting. So oh, we are adjourned. It's not, it's really. thank, you. thank you all. You're Thanks, welcome. everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 See you Monday evening. Oh, yes. Thank that you. is what I forgot. We will repeat this Monday at 6. 
Um, Nikki, were you going to post a uh, screenshot the information um, for voting? If anybody has any questions, and you can always find it at townofwoodstock.org. Um, but basically, your ballots are available at the town clerk. You can always always get a hold of Charlie. Um, you can get town reports here or online. Here we go. Yep. There we are. Thank you, Nikki. Farewell, Thank you, Nikki. everyone. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Good job. Thank you. I'll be happy. Didn't run out of paper. Nope. <laughs> hey. No. This says twelve. Nice. Thank you. Nice job. This says twelve ten.